What? You mean something that could open up a way to escape was right under my nose the whole time? That does it. If I get out of here, I'm having that eye surgery. My weak stomach will just have to get over it. No, don't touch that. That is totally cool. And you, lady, are awesome. That is absolutely brilliant. I haven't the foggiest idea. You're talking to a chap who can't see, remember? Sorry, can't help you. I'm afraid you're on your own out there, Nancy. Whatever you say. Sounds right to me. I really couldn't tell you. I sure don't. Sorry. Kyla! We're trapped down here! Get a ladder or something! Uh-oh. Oh. Hi! If you're trying to reach Bess Marvin, or her super cool cousin, George Vane, you're out of luck, because neither of us can pick up right now. But be sure to leave a message or call back, okay? Because you know what they say. Your call is very important to us. Your call is very important to us. Fine by me. Probably. I wouldn't know. Probably not. Uh, no. Sure. No! Nuts. Well, now you're trapped over there and I'm trapped over here. No harm done. A reasonable assumption. Pulling the wool over people's eyes while pulling the rug out from under them is something I take great pleasure in. I don't know why. I just do. And actually, Kyler is, in a way, quite correct. In point of fact... I don't feel like talking anymore. A reasonable assumption. Pulling the wool over people's eyes while pulling the rug out from under them is something I take great pleasure in. I don't know why, I just do. And actually they are, in a way, quite correct. In point of fact, can't talk, too hungry. Just get us out of here, okay? Thrilled, I'm sure. You wouldn't happen to have a tunnel boring machine in your pocket, would you? Or food? Do you have any food on you? A biscuit or two, some crisps, Coca Kringle, anything? Ah, uh, sorry. Oh, the only thing that woman in the shabby dress ever gives me are carrots and potatoes and such. I've been wandering around down here for days. I want something full of sugar and nice, greasy fat. You know, real food. Every once in a while, the silo slides open, and she'll be standing up there in the fresh air looking down at me. Then I get showered with vegetables, she goes away, and the silo slides shut. Whenever I talk to her, she kind of grunts as if she understands what I'm saying, Yet she refuses to help me. It's like I'm her pet or something. And now there's two of us. Dibs on the potatoes. As best I can figure from the papers and drawings I found, you're standing in the laboratory where the bloke who lived here during World War II did all his top secret research. He was working on new forms of propulsion to be used in flying machines, rockets, that sort of thing. Apparently, to keep unwanted visitors out, he planted devices which would allow him, at the push of a button, to seal off the lab. This gate and all the others will go up when our hostess decides to feed us. Opening those silo doors seems to reset everything. Opening those silo doors is also the only way out of here. Believe me, I know. Apparently, to keep unwanted visitors out, he planted devices which would allow him, at the push of a button, to seal off the lab. This gate and all the others will go up when our hostess decides to feed us. Opening those silo doors seems to reset everything. Granted, I lost my glasses and am extremely nearsighted without them, but I've inspected every inch of this subterranean paradise, and unfortunately, it seems the only way out is through those silo doors. You see, I stumbled upon the entrance to a secret passage in the nursery so I thought it would be jolly good fun to make some ghostly sorts of noise from inside it and give Kyler a fright. But all of a sudden, this crow flew in through the window and came straight at my eyes. I fell backwards into the passage, trying to get away from it, and the next thing I knew, I was falling through a hole in the floor. Fortunately, I only fell about two meters. What? You mean something that could open up a way to escape was right under my nose the whole time? That does it. If I get out of here, I'm having that eye surgery. My weak stomach will just have to get over it. No, don't touch that! That is totally cool. And you, lady, are awesome. That is absolutely brilliant. I haven't the foggiest idea. You're talking to a chap who can't see, remember? 
Sorry, can't help you. I'm afraid you're on your own out there, Nancy. Whatever you say. Sounds right to me. I really couldn't tell you. I sure don't. Sorry. A siren went off. The door above me slid shut, and there I was. I yelled until I was hoarse, but no use. I was trapped. So I felt my way along the tunnel, looking for another way out, until I got to the lab you're standing in, at which point I blundered into the button you just pressed, siren goes off, door comes down, and suddenly I'm even more trapped. Not long after that, the doors at the top of the silo slid open. So I looked up, and by squinting really hard, I could see an old woman with long hair, wearing a long ratty dress, just standing there, looking down at me. I haven't kept track. All I know is, not one word. She just tossed a turnip down to me and left. And since then, that's the worst of it. Knowing that my eagerness to play a silly prank on her is going to wind up ruining the wedding. She's going to be so disappointed and humiliated and appalled. She'll never forgive me. What an idiot I am. I'm not surprised. The fact is, soon after we got here, he tried to tell me I was about to make a colossal mistake and that I should call off the wedding. Such wishful thinking on his part is exactly why I didn't ask him to be my best man. Oh, I made up some excuse about office politics and occupational expediency, but Kit was, and is, and hopefully always will be, my best friend. But having him be my best man, knowing he's still smitten with Kyla? I figured I'd pass. <laughs> you know... I actually missed that superstitious, super ridiculous old fossil. Kit and I spent the better part of an evening rigging line in the garden so we could fool him into thinking a leprechaun was moving through the bushes. Only a branch snapped off and whacked Kit in the eye, and that was that. Except, I must admit, seeing as I have no idea who or what that thing is that has us trapped down here, Mr. Delaney might not be all that wrong. So, if our wedding ever does take place, it looks like I'll end up with a crazy in law after all. I love her so much, and I am so lucky a mongrel like me landing someone as smart and beautiful as her, and now, whether I ever get out of here or not, I'm going to lose her. What an unthinking, short-sighted, immature idiot. So I got to my feet, and since it was dark and my glasses were knocked off when that crow attacked me, I started feeling my way along the wall, looking for a ladder or something, so I could climb back up but instead my hand hit some sort of button. I called to her, told her who I was and what had happened. I told her everything, called to her till I went hoarse again, but she just stood there. I even tossed my ring up to her, saying, Go ahead, keep it, just get me the heck out of here. Nothing. You do that? Great. Why don't I wait right here? I'd like to help you, but... Yes, hi. Uh, my name is Nancy Drew. I'm calling from Castle Malloy. I'm Kyler Mallory's maid of honor. No, I'm afraid he's still at it. But if you have a second, could I ask you some questions? Do you have any idea where Matt may be hiding? Did you help look for Matt after he disappeared? Do you remember Matt saying anything odd, anything that in hindsight might suggest where he went? What do you mean? You didn't get along with them? Did you see or hear anything strange while you were at Castle Malloy? No, Bess, it's me, Nancy. I'm calling from a phone in Ireland. Hello, Ms. Marvin. What was incredible? Just checking in. What's new there? Hi, guys. Just wanted to see what's going on there and tell you what's going on here. <laughs> Catch you later. Bye. I'll call back. Sounds fabulous. Be sure to wish Kathy and Carrie a happy birthday for me. He said he was coming. I'm sure he'll be there. Just as I got to the castle, some very strange-looking person ran across the road in front of me and made me drive into a ditch. Just as I got to the castle, something that may or may not have been a banshee ran across the road in front of me and made me drive into a ditch. Matt, the guy my friend Kyler came here to marry? He's missing. He's there somewhere. I talked to him earlier. No, he, she, or it just kind of vanished. Bess, what I saw just looked like a banshee. I'm sure it really wasn't a banshee, although it did just kind of vanish. He came to Ireland with Kyler and his best friend Kit, but now he's nowhere to be found. Kyler is convinced he's pulling a prank. Apparently, he's a pretty big practical joker. Actually, I'm kind of thinking his disappearance may have something to do with a weird-looking person who ran across the road in front of me just as I got to the castle and made me drive into a ditch. Anyway, whomever or whatever I saw just kind of vanished right afterwards. Guys? Hello?
Bess? George? Anyone? And when I talked to Kyler, I found out that her husband-to-be has vanished. Matt came to Ireland with Kyler and his best friend Kit, but now he's nowhere to be found. Kyler is convinced he's pulling a prank. Has Ned shown up yet? Have you seen Ned? When I talked to him, he sounded weird. Tell me what? Oh, poor Ned. I know, he told me. Yeah, he's quite a guy. What would you two say if I said I needed a hint? That's not an old Irish saying. My cell phone bit the dust when I drove into the ditch, so I'm calling from the payphone of this quaint little country inn. Quaint is in a place where people go to play games like darts and relax over their favorite combination of fruit juices. In fact, any time I want to play the games here, I can earn tokens by mixing drinks. And the inn is more or less part of Castle Malloy. Turns out that's something I'm pretty good at. The caretaker Mr. Delaney hangs out here. It's the only way I could get him to talk. The last woman to live there, Caitlin Malloy, used to own the place. And Mr. Delaney, the castle's caretaker, hangs out here, which is good because I needed to talk to him. I promised Kyler I'd find Matt. I figured Mr. Delaney might know something that could help me. He says Matt was kidnapped by fairies. Whoever ran out in front of my car dropped a handmade doll that looks like the missing groom. Kyler thinks I saw Matt, and the doll was just part of the practical joke he's playing. As far as I can tell, no one... Stub, it looks like someone has been making dolls in this hut I found on the other side of the bog. I have a feeling it's the person who ran out in front of my car when I first got here. Well, I'm pretty sure it's not the missing groom. Not yet. That would be my guess. Just what I was thinking. According to Alan Payne, Matt's best man, there was a lot of arguing going on just before Matt disappeared. Matt was fighting with Kit, Kyler was fighting with Matt, Alan said he went back to London to wait for Matt to reappear because he couldn't stand all the constant squabbling. Good question. Unfortunately, the person most qualified to answer it has disappeared. Did I tell you that Kit Foley has a black eye? Newsflash, Kyler used to date Kit Foley, Matt's best friend. In fact, Kit says he's the one who introduced Kit to Matt. He says he is. He says he is. However, he and Kyler just had a rip-roaring argument in which she accused him of still having feelings for her. We don't know that for sure, Bess. You have, Bess. This one crow keeps hanging around the castle. I caught it trying to steal something out of the old nursery. I caught it trying to steal a red gemstone out of the old nursery. According to Mr. Delaney, the Irish caretaker, banshees sometimes take the form of a hooded crow. Through an open window... There's a lot of open windows in the castle. Half of it's in ruins. Not for a second. Crows are scavengers. It's probably just waiting for a chance to go through the trash. Kyler asked me to pick some special herbs and flowers to add to her wedding bouquet. According to Irish lore, each plant is associated with something like happiness, courage, peace, love, things that would be good to have a lot of when you're getting married. All the strange goings-on around here are starting to get to her. I think she's just doing whatever she can to keep the forces of good on her side or something. I found a draft of the vows Kyler is planning to say at her wedding. Problem is, these vows have the words, What am I doing? This is wrong. Scrawl beneath them. That's true. That's true, too. I admit, that doesn't make much sense. There are all these sheep running around outside, and guess who has to put them back in their pen? Actually, Mr. Delaney kind of roped me into it. There were all these sheep running around outside, and guess who had to put them back in their pen? Actually, I said I'd shear a few sheep for him, too. Actually, I sheared a few sheep for him, too. I told Mr. Delaney I'd shear some of his sheep for him. I wound up shearing some of Mr. Delaney's sheep for him. I found this beautiful family tree in the tower of the castle, which I'm pretty sure the couple who lived here during World War II used as their master bedroom. No, but I think someone's been keeping track of who's dead and who's alive on it. She's also been keeping a list of crows. The name of the couple's daughter, Fiona Malloy, wasn't marked as deceased. I have a hunch she's the strange old woman I keep seeing, and that the crow I keep seeing is her pet. The name of the couple's daughter, Fiona Malloy, wasn't marked as deceased. I'm pretty sure she's the strange old woman I keep seeing, and that the crow I keep seeing is her pet. As usual, Bess, that's a very good question. Never mind, we'll talk more later. Bye! Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all I got for now. You guys are wearing sunscreen, right? Just checking. Bye! I better get going. That's it from here. I'll let you get back to the party. I'm sure there's a certain way I'm supposed to put those four gemstones back into that eight-cross placard in the nursery.
but I'm not sure what it is. What's the deal with the nine squares in the nursery, the ones with the cute, colorful little otters on them? I can't figure out how to match up those otters. May I please have just a little more help? When my best friend, Bess Marvin, wins a vacation for three at a resort on a private island in the Bahamas, she naturally invites me and her cousin, George Fane, to go with her. But by the time I arrive, the owners of the resort are nowhere to be found, and Bess has been kidnapped. To get her back, George and I must find a long-lost treasure, a quest that brings us face-to-face -face with many of the island's strange inhabitants and forces us to risk our lives, both on and in the sea. Help us find the treasure before this sun-drenched paradise turns deadly. In my next adventure, how can I get across the bog without falling in? I'm not sure what to do with a list of books that I think Brendan Malloy left in the tower. There are bugs crawling all over something in the hut. How can I get rid of them? I need help filling out that seating chart Kit wants me to do. I'm staying there. I just wanted to talk to you. Kyler wants me to find Matt for her. I sure am. I just wanted to ask you something. Huh? I don't blame you a bit. I also have no idea what you're talking about. Sounds good to me. I'll see to it you get your crows whatever, ASAP. Maybe, but I don't feel like playing mixed maid right now. I'm sorry, happened to the what? By the good people, you mean fairies? Just what are these good people going to do with him? Can you prove that's what happened to him? Sounds to me like the good people are actually just the opposite. The fairies? Uh, the good people? What makes you say that? The name of this place. Just what exactly is a banshee? Sometimes I hear this strange kind of wailing sound when I'm in the castle. Have you ever heard it? You mean someone in the castle is going to die? I don't think so. This sounded more mechanical. Do you dislike all Englishmen as much as you dislike Matt Simmons? Or is he special somehow? What about Kyler? What about his friend Kit? Why were you so opposed to Matt staying in the nursery? So you don't really think the room is haunted. Do you spend much time in the nursery? Don't tell me. Let me guess. It's the good people. I saw someone with long hair and a gray robe outside the castle tonight. There's no other explanation for what I saw? Do banshees ever leave things behind, like, say, little dolls? What would a banshee be doing on a road at night? What do you know about the stone pillars with all the weird writing on them? I wouldn't mind having a go at it. Do you think I could borrow your book? I could probably fill in. I mean, not permanently, but let me try again. I don't want to do this right now. I want to try again. I don't feel like doing this right now. Maybe later. Give me another chance, okay? I think I'll try again later. Great, thank you. Would you by any chance know how Matt's luggage wound up hidden behind the cots in the Great Hall? A key? You want me to bring them in? But I... I don't have a whistle. Since you're going to shear the sheep that are in the barn tomorrow anyway, would it be okay if I sheared one of them tonight? Three bags of wool. You got it. Three bags? What if I can't? Have you ever tried to walk across the bog? What if you had, say, a map? Have you ever been to the other side of the bog? You mean my keys weren't in the car? I'd better get going. Guess I'll go now. I should get back to the castle. I'll let you drink your crow's nest in peace. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do to win at darts. What's the secret to using those little blocks to balance that scale with three trays in the library? Do you have any suggestions when it comes to putting the picture with all the dolls on it to use? When it comes to that dollhouse, how do I know where each doll is supposed to go? How do I go about finding all the flowers and herbs Kyler wants in her bouquet? What's the deal with the board with all the gears on it? I printed out the instructions for the jetpack, yet it explodes when I try to activate it. How come? Those leprechaun statues in the garden. I can't figure out in what directions to turn them. Do you know how those three-piece stone pillars in the garden are supposed to be turned? What's the trick to stacking those discs by that lantern? What can you tell me about those sliding tiles on the posts of the castle gates? How do I go about printing something else on that old press? I'm not sure how to go about shearing enough sheep to get Mr. Delaney his three bags of wool. I'd sure like to see the rest of the castle grounds. Any idea how to open the gate in that stone wall? Ransom of the Seven Ships. Hello, I'm Nancy Drew. I'm here for the wedding. No, wait, please. My car's in the ditch by the gate. I can't go anywhere. I left the keys in the car. Can I at least talk to Kyler?
No, wait, I came all the way from the States. Please, can I come in just for a minute? Hello? Are you there? Hello? But I've been to the inn. They don't have any rooms. I've got to stay here. Hello? Are you there? Hello? Oh, my gosh. Listen, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be in here. This is your home, isn't it? My name's Nancy Drew, and you're... you're Fiona, right? Fiona Malloy? Fiona, listen. I, I didn't mean any harm. See, I I'm looking for someone. A young man named Matt. I don't suppose you've seen him. Fiona? <gasps> Looks like I need a key. <gasps> oh, no! Yep, and according to Kyler's directions, I'm within two kilometers of Castle Malloy. Now stop worrying about me and get over to the Dunhills. What time is it there? Yes, Ned, I'm talking on my cell phone while I'm driving, but it's okay. There's absolutely no traffic. And I think I see the gates. I gotta go. Say hi to the Dunhills for me and have fun. <laughs> I would like a fortune. I would like a hint. Hello? Hey, Nancy. How come you're not calling from your cell phone? Hello? Forget to tell me something? What'd you suddenly remember? That was fast. Great. What's going on there? Hello? How's it going? Oh, yeah. It's fun. Very fun. Oh, the usual party things. Hi, Nancy. No comment. Hey, Nancy. You're missing a great party. Nope. Problem solved. Nancy? Nancy? Ned here. Nancy? I'm at the pool party. I just came inside for a few minutes. It's hot out there. Yeah. In fact, Kathy and Carrie say hi. So do their parents, and everyone else who's here, which is pretty much all of River Heights. I just miss you, that's all. You were in a car accident? You drove into a ditch? Look, enough about me. I want to hear about Ireland. How's it going? What do you mean it kinda looked like a woman? You think you saw a banshee? A banshee, as in the creature that supposedly wails before someone dies. A banshee? As in the creature that supposedly wails before someone dies? How can I not worry? You're in Ireland not two hours, and what happens? I'm You're fine. fine. Right. Here we go again. You're in Ireland not two hours, and what happens? The groom is missing? Wait a minute. You and Kyler are there by yourselves? This guy Matt thinks disappearing less than a week before his wedding is funny? I'm no expert on marriage or anything, but I don't think that's a good sign. I am. I, I just ducked inside when my phone rang, that's all. So what's going on there? Yeah, I know. I saw them. Yeah, I saw her too. No, why would I be hiding from Minky McNabb? She goes after him like a heat-seeking missile. Okay, so maybe I have been avoiding her. I know. Look, don't worry. I'll figure something out. In the meantime, let's just talk about what you've been doing, okay? Thanks to Jackson Chen. As soon as he showed up, I glommed onto him, and by default, so did Minky. At which point, I made it very clear that Jackson was unattached to anyone, while I was very much attached to you. Which allowed me to detach myself from the two of them, and walk away a free and happy man. Jackson doesn't know what hit him, but he'll get over it. So, how's it going? When a guy says that, it usually means he walked into some other guy's fist. It'd make me wonder, that's for sure. Has anyone else around there heard it? What about the caretaker? He must spend a lot of time around there, you know, caretaking, so if anyone has heard anything weird, I should think it would be him. You don't believe him, do you? For which there's a logical explanation, I guarantee it. Might I suggest you consult someone who's much closer to the goings-on there in the castle than I am? That fortune teller in the Great Hall? Nope. Madame Ishabel knows all. What's stopping you? There are no stairs? Why do you want to get up in the tower so bad? Why would he be up in a tower? You just said there's no way to get in. He learned how to fly. Sorry, Nancy. What would somebody's glasses be doing in a fireplace? You think he was fighting with someone? Relax. Because you know what? If I wore glasses and if I were into playing practical jokes on people, I'd do just that. I'd break them and leave them someplace really weird just to freak out whoever finds them. But why don't you give that fireplace a real good look just in case? Where does the trapdoor go? Sounds like you'd better find out. Where was she this time? Did you go after her? What? How'd she get up there? What did this woman look like? You're pretty much describing a banshee, you know. Just checking. What makes you say that? Like what? Do you know who she is? I know that tone. It means it's just a matter of time. No kidding. Where? Is that good news or bad? The caretaker could be up to something. 
Did you confront him? Well, if Kit hid Matt's luggage, the plot thickens. But if Kit really did hide it, someone like who? So you think she doesn't believe that and is just using it as an excuse not to report him missing to the local authorities? The woman Matt's supposed to marry? You think she somehow made him disappear? Wouldn't hurt to keep her on your radar, just in case. Except it's so obvious. If Kit were guilty of some kind of foul play when it comes to Matt's disappearance, you'd think he'd come up with something better than the old walking into a door story. You think he did something to Matt out of jealousy? I'm just playing devil's advocate. You're the detective, not me. Thank goodness. It puts an interesting spin on things, that's for sure. Come again? How can you possibly not be kidding? You're right. I am jealous. I want one. She goes to Ireland to be in a wedding and winds up chasing banshees around the countryside, strapped to a jetpack. That's my girl. Doing what? Unearthly howling noise? Nancy, what have you gotten yourself into? You think he's somehow taken care of Matt? Either way, sounds like it definitely wouldn't hurt to keep an eye on him. Sure wish you were here. Bye, Nance. Just be careful over there. It was great talking to you. All right, talk to you later. Hi, this is Ned. I can't answer the phone right now, so either leave me a message or just call me back. Bye. So your plane was on time, your luggage arrived, your rental car was waiting. Everything went without a hitch? Around two. The party just started. It's going to go all day, so I've got plenty of time. Are you driving without you? Yeah, right. Take care, Nancy. Alan Payne. That's kind of weird. Best man, Alan Payne. I'd better finish the rest of these before I go anywhere. One more to go. Might as well do it now. There we go. Program number three. Here are those flowers and herbs you asked for. Where are those lights in the tower coming from? I shouldn't go messing with this without permission. This is useless. It's not lit. I need to throw this dart first. Hello? 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 Could you come to the door, please? Kyler? Are you in there? Hello? Hello? Anyone there? Hello? Please, come to the door. Hello? Hello? The inn doesn't have any rooms. Hello? I can't stay at the inn. There are no rooms. Please open the door. The inn is full. I have to stay here. Did you hear me? I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to stay here tonight, okay? Kyler, can you hear me? Can anyone hear me? Did you know there was a button here that says, In case of lockdown, press to open? I'll remember that. Thanks. What was that? What is that? One bag down, two bags to go. That's two bags. I promised Mr. Delaney I'd fill three. There, all done. I'm not trying that again until I know exactly where to step. I probably shouldn't put a large disc on top of a small one. That face looks like some kind of charger. Wonder what that crow's doing in there. Wonder where that crow went. I better not go in there. Here, sheepy, sheepy, sheep. Come here, little sheep. Come here. Any of you sheep want a haircut? Yoo-hoo, sheep. Free haircut right here. Come on, Mr. Sheep, come here. I'm not going to hurt you. Come on. It's too dark. I can't see a thing. I knew I should have packed my flashlight. I need some light. It's pitch black out here. That's just a little too far to jump. I don't think I can jump that far. I can't quite get there from here. <laughs> ah! I better go outside to do this. That sheep doll needs stuffing. Oh my gosh, I'm flying! Woohoo! Matt, are you in here? Hello? Anybody here? Oh no, I'm out of power! Ah! Oh no, I'm out of power! Ah! I think this doll is supposed to be me. My lantern broke. That's just great. I can't reach. It's too high. It looks like the only sure way of getting those silo doors to open is by launching the rocket. This'll come in handy. Well, that was a bust. I must have done something wrong. Oops. Well, back to the drawing board. I should use black ink to print the programs. It's already inked. I need a plate. I already made a print. I need to throw the dart I already have first. Wah! 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 <gasps> I'm stuck. I can't move. Oh, no. I can't get out. I already have some bug repellent. I don't need to make more. 
Ew, ew, ew. To stop that sheep doll, I'm going to need more wool. This is where my phone card comes in handy. Phone card to the rescue. If I want to call somebody, I need to use my phone card. Good thing I've got lots of credit on my phone card. Where is that phone card of mine? Maybe I can use that crate to help build a ladder. I can't just go snooping around, not with that guy right there. I can't just go snooping around, not with Kit right there. Oh, I, um, um, hello, I'm Nancy Drew. I'm here for the wedding. There's somebody up there. I'll bet it's Kyler. I'd better go somewhere out in the open to work on this. Whoa, that would have been quite a fall. I'd better check the bag to see how much wool I've collected. I think the bag may be full. I can't leave. I promised Mr. Delaney I'd fill three bags with wool. If I leave without filling three bags with wool, Mr. Delaney will be fit to be tied. I'd better not leave until there's three bags full of wool for Mr. Delaney. It looks like a piece is missing. That's a pretty big step. I'm not sure I can get over there without falling in. There, the paddock's all locked up. I'd better go tell Kyler I finished printing her programs. Now that's an interesting look. Whoa, who programmed this thing? Is that a sheep or a show dog? Yikes, I must have done something wrong. Guess I messed that one up. Ooh, did something wrong there. Wait a minute, that's not right. Okay, who ordered the sushi? Oops. Ugh, my depth perception stinks. Let me try it again. Oh, come on, guys, let me open the box. I gotta know what's in there. Please let me open it. Please, 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 please. Oh, surprise! I can only print one at a time. I should finish what I just printed before I take more paper. I was going to say the same about you. I'm not sure I fully understand the circumstances yet. I think I'll take a run at it after all. No, I don't feel like tackling that. Could you take a look at it? I'm still perfecting it. What do you mean comes to her senses? The truth being... Have you told Kyler? Are you sure? Without saying anything to her? I don't think the possibility that he walked out on her has even occurred to her. If you and Matt are best friends, how come he didn't make you his best man? If you and Matt are best friends, how come you didn't want to be his best man? When or how did you realize that Matt had disappeared? Where did you last see him? Did you help look for him? If you weren't going to be the best man, how come you came out here so early? How long ago was that? How long have you known Kyler? Well, it's just, you know, kind of a hobby. Although Kyler did say it'd be nice if I could find Matt. How come you sound so American? Kyler says sometimes she hears Matt's voice, only it's very faint and muffled. Do you ever hear him? It looks like you're drawing something. Are you an artist? Residential, real estate, or commercial? Have you ever developed a project in Ireland? The caretaker seems to think you're the one who should be getting married here, not Matt. But you don't think he had anything to do with Matt's disappearance. How did he act towards Matt? From the looks of that picture I found over there, it looks like you and Kyler used to be a lot more than friends. From the looks of that picture I found over there, it looks like you and Kyler used to be an item. I thought he might know something that could help us find Matt. Sure, I can do that. That's okay. I think I'll pass. So now we can talk. That discussion you had with Matt? Come on, really. What was it about? He gave you that shiner. I found Matt's luggage in here, right over there. It was behind the cots. You sound kind of disappointed. You think he's just pulling one of his pranks? Have you ever been up in the tower? I could have sworn I saw lights coming from it. Was Matt by any chance into rock climbing? Actually, it was Kyler. She and I saw someone with long white hair reaching in through the window of the nursery. Kyler screamed, and whoever or whatever it was disappeared. Good question. Whoever we saw looked like the person that ran across the road in front of me when I first arrived. Did you hang out with Matt in the nursery much? Have you ever been to the little hut that's in the middle of the bog? You just gotta watch your step. Did Matt ever try to cross the bog? I couldn't help but overhear the discussion you and Kyler had in the library. The part about your still having feelings for her. Was she right about that, too? But if Matt's just pulling a prank, why would he bother hiding his luggage? Actually, Mr. Delaney told me he's the one who put Matt's luggage over there. I found out that Mr. Delaney is the one who hid Matt's luggage. I found Matt's luggage. It's over there. 
Apparently, he was adamant that Matt not stay in the nursery, so he removed all of Matt's things and hid them down here, thinking it would force Matt out. That was the day Matt disappeared. What is it? I found the sketch you did on the ground outside. What's it for? Great, so it's okay if I keep this. I'll see you later, okay? I'd better get going. See ya. Time for me to scoot. Good talking to you. I found the sketch you did on the ground outside. They look like development plans for the land Castle Malloy is on. Did you see or hear anything strange a little while ago? Do you think I could borrow your lantern? Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Matt's disappeared? How can somebody you came all the way out here with to marry just disappear? He disappeared as a prank? You mean the wedding hasn't been called off? Why did that man at the door tell me the wedding was off? So you're here by yourself now? Proud of his heritage, huh? You sure the wedding shouldn't at least be postponed? Do you have any idea where Matt disappeared to? When did he arrive? Is he from London too? Someone ran out in front of my car on my way here and caused me to drive into a ditch. Me, I'm fine. My car and my cell phone, uh, not so good. And I'm pretty sure whomever I saw dropped this. Looks like some kind of homemade doll. I didn't really get a good look. It was dark and I was distracted and it moved so fast. Frankly, I'm not even sure if what I saw was a person. Does it bother you to be here all by yourself? Where does Mr. Delaney live? Who pays him? How long has he been the caretaker? When you said you sometimes hear Matt, where are you when that happens? In here? And you've looked all over for him? Has Mr. Delaney ever heard him? Uh-oh. I found these glasses in the fireplace in the nursery. Did you look there when you were searching for Matt? Did he have an extra pair? Why was he staying in the nursery? Why didn't he stay downstairs with Kit? Let me do some more looking around before we jump to any conclusions. The glasses could still just be part of an elaborate, practical joke. If Matt was staying in the nursery, where's his luggage? Kit says the luggage and Matt vanished at the same time. Not yet, but I will. But I noticed that they say the best man is someone named Alan Payne. If Kit is Matt's best friend, why isn't Kit the best man? I noticed that the best man is someone named Alan Payne. When will he be showing up? What are you doing in here, if you don't mind my asking? Why didn't he want people to find out he was Irish? Your parents didn't even know? All these books were Brendan's? Have you come across anything in here that indicates whose side your great-uncle was really on? I walked into the nursery just in time to see a crow pick something off the wall and try to fly out the window with it. Do you know the significance of the design with the eight circles that's on the wall in the nursery? I wonder where it came from. Mr. Delaney says banshees sometimes take the form of a hooded crow. When I called Alan Payne, he said that on the day Matt disappeared, you and Matt had a pretty big argument. Can you remember what you were arguing about? Alan said it sounded pretty serious. When was the last time someone lived here? I found Matt's luggage hidden behind the cots downstairs by Kit's things. It kind of looked like Kit was hiding it. There you go. Did you know when you decided to hold your wedding here that half the place is pretty much rubble? It looks like a bomb went off in it. When was the last time someone lived here? Earlier, you said something about an explosion. Did your grandfather ever live here? I found it outside. Apparently, Kit did them. Did you ask him to? I'll catch you later. I'm going to go play detective now. I'd better get to work. I'll let you get back to your reading. I get to see you again, and I get to see Ireland. <laughs> I'm the one who's thrilled, believe me. Let me know if there's anything else I can do for you. I'm your maid of honor, remember? I promise. The little girl that was living here when the place exploded, Fiona, I think she survived after all and is still alive. I'm pretty sure she's the person we saw at the window of the nursery. I have the feeling she has something to do with Matt's disappearance. Me, I'm fine. My car and my cell phone, uh, not so good. I'm pretty sure whoever caused me to swerve off the road dropped this. It could have been, I guess, but even if it was, feel like talking? I take it you're Matt. I'm Nancy Drew, the maid of honor. She feeds you? Just how did you wind up down here anyway? Why did this door shut when I pulled that switch? Are you sure there's no way out of here? Kyler and Kit think you disappeared as a practical joke. Kyler thinks you disappeared as a practical joke. How did you get down here? How often does she show up? 
She didn't say anything to you? Kyler's trying her best not to show it, but she's really worried about you. Kit is convinced you disappeared because you decided you didn't want to marry Kyler after all. For a while, Kit was convinced you disappeared because you had decided you didn't want to marry Kyler after all. Mr. Delaney, the caretaker? He thinks you were spirited away by fairies. I'm pretty sure her name's Fiona. She's the daughter of Brenda Malloy, the guy who was doing all the research down here. Everyone thought she was killed along with her parents when this place exploded. But she wasn't, and she's been wandering around in the bog near the castle ever since. Well, I'm going to go find us a way out of here. I'm going to look around some more. I'll be in here checking everything out, okay? Hi, Ned. It's me. It's kind of a long story. Well, let's just say you were right about driving and using my cell phone. Sort of. Me again. Hi. Hey, Ned. Hi. How's the party? Hi. So what's going on at the party? Oh, sounds like your missile defense system is still engaged. Whoa, no more hide-and-seek, huh? Hi, Ned. It's me. Just checking in from the Emerald Isle. Call you later. Bye. Hi, Ned. Hi, Ned. So are you enjoying the party? So, are you at the pool party? You sound funny. So where are you? It doesn't sound like it. Yeah, but you heard me hang up, so I wasn't really talking on the phone. I just had it in my hand. Even though I did wind up in a ditch. I'm fine, but the rental car and my cell phone are pretty much history. Something that kind of looked like a woman and kind of didn't ran across the road right in front of me just as I got to the castle. Something that kind of looked like a woman and kind of didn't ran across the road right in front of me. I had to swerve to miss her, or it, or whatever. Well, it would be going a whole lot better if the guy Kyler came here to marry wasn't missing. It had all this long, wild hair, and it was wearing something flowing, like a dress or a robe. But its face, it just didn't look human. Do you know what a banshee is? It really freaked me out. If I were Mr. Delaney, the castle's Irish caretaker, I'd think so, yeah. Right, well, technically it's a fairy, not a creature. According to Mr. Delaney, the castle's extremely Irish caretaker, what I saw was probably a banshee. It startled me so badly that I drove off the road into a ditch. But don't worry, I I'm fine. A mystery falls into my lap, a harmless mystery, because like I said before, a mystery falls into my lap, a harmless mystery. Don't worry, Ned. Did I mention that Matt Simmons, the guy Kyler came here to marry, is missing? She thinks he's just playing a practical joke. No, Matt's best friend is here, too. So is the caretaker, Mr. Delaney. Sorry, I'll call you later. Bye. Are you sure you're at the Dunhills party? Because it doesn't sound that way. Bess and George are there, too, you know. And Minky McNabb. Ned, are you hiding from her? Because it's a well-known fact that if she's at a party and she detects a cute, unattached male, you can't let her ruin the party for you like that. Nice job. Kit Foley, Matt the groom's best friend, has a black eye, which he says is because he walked into a door. If that's true, that means Kit is lying, which makes Matt's sudden disappearance even more disturbing. Every once in a while, I hear this weird wailing sound, but I can't tell where it's coming from. I don't want to say anything to Kyler about it because I'm afraid it'll freak her out. And I'm not sure I trust anything Mr. Black Eye has to say. Haven't asked him. Uh, Mr. Delaney, true blue Irishman that he is, thinks I heard a banshee. Of course not. It sure is a creepy sound, though. I think I may need a hint. Someone like... You're kidding me. I'd really like to get into the Tower of Castle Malloy. The lack of stairs, for one thing. They were destroyed along with half the castle in a mysterious explosion during World War II. Apparently, the guy who lived here then, Brendan Malloy, was some kind of mad scientist. I saw some strange lights coming from inside it. I don't know, because it's there? I can't help but think it might have been Matt. Oh, maybe that's where he's hiding out. Kit says Matt is no rock climber, but still, I can't help but think it might have been Matt. Besides, that could be where Matt's hiding out. I know, but maybe... You're not helping, Ned. I found Matt's broken glasses in the fireplace of the room he was staying in. They could have been knocked off his face and landed there. This is not exactly your normal fireplace. What's really disturbing is Kyler says Matt is pretty much blind without his glasses. That's a possibility. I didn't admit it to Kyler, but I'm getting worried. You're probably right.
The back of it opens up, and there's a trapdoor in the floor behind it. I don't know. I don't know how to open it. And the back of the fireplace opens up, and in the floor behind it, there's a trap door. Remember the woman who made me drive into a ditch? I saw her again. Outside the window to the nursery, I came face to face with her. Then Kyler came in and scared her off. Couldn't. She just sort of vanished. Oh, and did I mention that the nursery is on the second floor? I have no idea. Although just before she appeared, I heard this unearthly howling noise. I heard it when she disappeared, too. Very old and disheveled, scary looking, with long, wild hair, and this crazy look in her eyes. I'm fine, Ned. Yeah, I know. I don't think banshees live in houses, and I'm pretty sure this lady does. I found a hut on the other side of the bog. I have the feeling it's where she lives. There's a bed in it, as well as all sorts of weird things, like cages, some big enough to hold a small child. Not yet. Remember the woman who made me drive into that ditch? I think I know where she lives. I found a hut on the other side of the bog. There's a bed in it, as well as all sorts of weird things. I think I know where that banshee lady lives. I found Matt's luggage. I'm not sure. The luggage looked as if it had been hidden. By Kit, who's been trying to convince me that Matt isn't playing a joke at all, but instead had second thoughts about getting married and hightailed it back to London. I'm not sure. The caretaker says he hid Matt's luggage in order to discourage Matt from staying in the nursery. But Kyler says she saw Matt's luggage in the nursery after Matt disappeared. And if that's true, not yet. He might be hiding something else as well. Yep, he denies hiding the luggage there and says if Matt's luggage is still around, that can only mean he was wrong and Matt is pulling a prank. He might be hiding something else as well. I have the feeling someone at Castle Malloy knows more than they're saying about Matt's disappearance. This is going to sound strange, but I kind of wonder about Kyler. Someone like Kit. There's something about the caretaker that makes me uneasy. I just don't know how she can honestly believe that her fiancé disappeared less than a week before their wedding as a joke. Exactly. Then again, if he really is an incorrigible, practical joker, she'd be the one to know. It's just real hard for me to ignore that black eye of his. He and Kyler used to be an item. I get the feeling that when they broke up, she moved on and he didn't. He admitted that he and Matt had a big fight about Kyler the evening before Matt disappeared. According to Kit, he was just trying to make Matt face what marriage to Kyler was really going to be like. But if he's lying... So are you saying the black eye makes him innocent? It's possible, I guess. You are going to be so jealous when I tell you this, but I can fly. I can fly through the air like a superhero. I'm not kidding. The guy who lived here during World War II invented a jetpack. You strap it on, push some buttons, and whoosh, you're flying. It is so cool. Maybe I can get you the jetpack this banshee lady I keep seeing has. I'm pretty sure it's how she gets around. Maybe I can get you the jetpack this banshee lady I keep seeing has. I'm pretty sure it's how she gets around. In fact, maybe I can get you the jetpack that banshee lady I told you about has. I'm pretty sure it's how she gets around. Maybe I can get you the jetpack that banshee lady I told you about has. I'm pretty sure it's how she gets around. In fact, I think she's been hanging out in the castle tower. Don't know yet. Maybe I better fly up there and take another look. He sure disliked him, I know that. Yet he seems to truly believe Matt was taken by fairies. Bye, Ned. I will. Talk to you soon. Just what I was going to say. Bye. Stub, I'll let you get back to the party. I better get going. I'll call you again, okay? That's it for now. Still have to do that. Can't check that off yet. I haven't done that. Sure, I'd rather not. Why not? I don't think so. Heck no. Maybe I'll come back later. I think so. I think not. Sock it to me. Sorry, I need a break.